अज़बिल्लाजीम बसमीम अलकुम डर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट दी पार्टिकल साइज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दिग्रेडेशन कर देर आर टू मैथड्स टू परफॉर्म दी पार्टिकल साइज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वन इज सीव एनालिसिस एंड दिन अदर वन इज दी हाइड्रोमीटर एनालिसिस so first we will start with the particle size distribution that why we need to what is particle size distribution and what is the significance and use of the particle size distribution what are the methods used in civil engineering and especially in geotechnical engineering to find out the particle size distribution so one of the methods is the sieve analysis which is used for the coarser particles or soils such as sand and gravels that is sieve analysis then we will plot the gradation curve and we will solve problem 1 and 2 related to sieve analysis then we will move towards the second method of the particle size distribution which is the hydrometer analysis and sometimes it's also known as sedimentation analysis which is performed on finer soils such as cells and clays <clears throat> the basis of hydrometer analysis is stokes law and we'll also talk about the coefficients coefficient of uniformity and coefficient of curvature or gradation which gives us an idea about the type of soil for example whether it's well graded whether it's poorly graded whether it's gap graded also the problems related to hydrometer analysis and coefficients will be solved at the end of today's lecture so starting with the particle size distribution it is the determination of the size range of particles we try to find out the various range of particles and why we find out because different size particles will be having different strength different compressibility characteristics different hydraulic conductivity behavior and that is expressed as the percentage of the total dry weight of the soil there are two methods one is sieve analysis which is suitable for particles larger than 0.075 mm which is for the sieve number 200 based upon the US CS unified soil classification system and performed on sand and gravels hydrometer analysis is suitable for particle sizes smaller than 0.075 mm in diameter and this is predominantly used for cells and clays Now, what is the significance and use of the particle size distribution? Now, the selection and acceptance of fill materials are often based on the gradation. For example, highway embankments, backfills, earthen dams. They might have different size requirements. Now, the question is that if we know the size, do we really know about the strength, compressibility, and hydraulic conductivity? characteristics you can get an idea about the strength compressibility and hydraulic conductivity characteristics are the effective stresses stress history mineral type structure fabric plasticity and geologic origins and what type of rocks disintegrated weathered and after that you got those solids but it is an indicator of engineering 
properties that for example if we are having relatively larger particles it will be having greater strength lesser compressibility and greater hydraulic conductivity degradation curve or the particle size distribution curve is used to calculate the coefficient of uniformity and coefficient of curvature these terms will be discussed in the coming slides now let's start with the sieve analysis a sieve analysis or a gradation test is a practice or procedure used in civil engineering to assess the particle size distribution also known as gradation of a granular material by allowing the material to pass through a series of sieves so we need to set the series of sieves progressively smaller mesh size and weighing the amount of material that is stopped or retained on each sieve as a fraction of the whole mass or we can calculate the percent finer or percent passing as well sieve analysis can be performed on any type of inorganic organic granular materials including sands crushed rock clays granite feldspar soil etc now the distribution of particle size is larger than 75 micrometer or 0.075 millimeter retained on the number 200 sieve is determined sieve analysis can be done with the help of hand or mechanical shaker which i will show you standard reference is tmd 6913 standard test methods for particle size distribution or gradation of soils using sieve analysis is used if you are performing or using hand shaking technique so you can place sieves and the lower sieve or we can call that as pen here the fine particles are collected in the pan and here the coarser sieve number four is placed and if you are using mechanical shakers you place the coarser sieve above and the finer sieve is placed here the pen is placed just below the sieve number 200 arrangement of sieves larger sieves or coarser sieves are placed above finer sieve or finer mesh is placed below here and you will get the information about the grain sizes retained and passed from the sieve number 4, 8, 16, 30, 50, 100, 200. If you are interested in finding the opening of the particular sieve, for example, sieve number 4 is 4.75. So see the particles which are retained on sieve number 4 are having sizes greater than 4.75 millimeter those soil particles are known as gravels anything in between these one till here is sandy particles and particles less than 0 0.075 millimeter they are silt and clay size particles for sieve number 200 the opening is equal to 0 0.075 millimeter now what do we mean about the sieve number four it means 
that for opening in one linear inch if we are having a one linear inch so there will be one two three and four opening and similarly one two three and four opening in this direction and in this direction and in this direction okay now to conduct sieve analysis first we oven dry the soil in order to remove any moisture present in in the soil and we break all these lumps gently into small particles the soil is shaken through a stack of sieves with opening of decreasing size from top to bottom the smallest size sieve that should be used is number 200 having opening equals to 0.075 millimeter the soil is shaken the mass of soil retained on on each sieve is determined now we determine the mass of soil retained and we can name that as m1 m2 or mn determine the total mass of the soil one m2 mn mp and that will be equal to the total mass of soil then we determine the cumulative mass of soil retained above each sieve for the ith sieve that is m1 plus m2 till the ith sieve number 200 or number 100 the mass of soil passing the ith sieve you can calculate by subtracting cumulative mass from the total mass the percent of soil passing the ith sieve or we can call that as percent finer can also be calculated using this equation so percent finer is equal to total mass mass of the soil retained on the first sieve the second one and the ith one divided by m and if you multiply with 100 you will get the percent finer Now we need to plot a gradation curve and the gradation curve can be plotted on a semi logarithmic scale. So on x axis on the logarithmic scale the plot particle diameter or size in millimeter and here on the y-axis it's percent finer now the flatter degradation curve it means that we are having larger range of particle sizes in this particular soil and if you are having a steeper curve it means that smaller range of particles are present here and sometimes we are having gap graded condition as well Now, the flatter the distribution of the curve, the larger the range of particle sizes and the steeper the curve, the smaller the size range. Now, for a coarse soil is described as well graded if there is no excess of particles in any size range. If no intermediate sizes are lacking, in general a well graded soil is represented by a smooth cave distribution curve i will show you the curve of different well graded poorly graded and gap graded soils coarse soil is described as poorly graded if a high proportion of the particles have sizes within narrow limits a uniform soil 
if particles of both large and small sizes are present but with a relatively low proportion of particles of intermediate size or we can call that as a gap credit or step credit so now if we plot the particle diameter size and percent finer and we are having a gradation curve something like this this can be written as well graded and you can get an idea that how much is the percentage of clay how much is the percentage of silt okay and how much is the percentage of sand how much is the percentage of gravel now there are three curves which have been plotted curve number one shows the well graded soil curve number two shows a poorly graded soil and curve number three shows gap graded so now we will solve a simple problem so following are the results of a CV analysis make the necessary calculations and draw a particle size distribution curve sieve numbers are given mass of soil retained total mass M is equal to 729 gram. Sum that up, come up with 729 grams here. Here is the equation total mass. If you subtract the mass of soil retained on each sieve and you divide it by total mass, and if you multiply it with 100, then you will get the percent final. So starting with the sieve number, the opening we can write it down from that table and mass retained is 0, 40, 60, 89, 140, 122, 210, 56 and 12 grams passed from sieve number 200. So cumulative mass retained is 0 because nothing is retained on the sieve number 4. Therefore. We can say that 100% passed from sieve number 4. Then 40 grams. If you divide that by 79, you will get the, and you subtract it from 100. This will give us the percent finer or you can use directly this equation to find out the total mass like for example 729 minus 40 divided by 729 into 100 this will give you directly this number you can then subtract 100 here you will get the percent finer 86.3 Similarly, the cumulative mass retained 40, 60 plus 89, it will be 189. Use this equation of the percent finer, you will get 74.1. Similarly, you can construct this table and find out the cumulative mass retained and percent finer. So once you get the I would say column number two, three, four, five, column number five. So you can plot column number five and column number two using Excel. If you plot percent finer on the y axis and particle size or particle diameter on the x axis, you will get a curve like this. And from this curve, you can find out D10, D20, 
T30, T60 which will give you various coefficients such as the coefficient of uniformity CC and CU which will be discussed at the end of today's lecture. We can also complete another table make a gradient curve and we can comment on the whether it's well graded whether it's poorly graded in another example sieve number diameter mass of soil retained on each sieve percent mass retained in cumulative percent mass retained in percent finer is requested so the mass of soil total mass is 496 gram now the percent mass retained is 3.2 cumulative mass retained is 3.2 if you simply subtract 3.2 from 100 it's 96.8 now the cumulative mass percent mass retained would be 6% and cumulative mass retained here the percent mass retained would be six percent and cumulative mass retained would be nine when we add and if you subtract it from 100 we'll be getting 90.8 34.8 percent mass retained for the 175 gram it's 44 cumulative because we are adding this one now 3.2 plus 6 and plus 34.8 and it will if you subtract it from 100 that would be 56 percent similarly we can construct this table as well and we can plot the column number 2 3 4 five, 6 this is column number 6 now and we can plot the percent finer on an arithmetic scale and this would be the x-axis diameter of the soil particle or particle size on the logarithmic scale again we can find out the d10 d30 d60 and we can comment on the gradation that whether it's well graded whether it's poorly graded whether it's gap graded soils obviously it's not gap graded soils and we will discuss the coefficients different coefficients at the end of this today's lecture now that was for coarser soil what if if we are getting more finer particles passing number 200 sieve so hydrometers are used hydrometer analysis or sedimentation analysis is performed so 151 h and 152 h there are two different types of hydrometers which are used the sedimentation or hydrometer method is used to determine the particle size distribution or the gradation of the material that is finer than number 200 or 75 micron meter sieve and larger than 0.02 micrometer the test is usually performed on material passing the number 200 no sorry number 10 2 millimeter or finer sieve and the results are presented as the mass percent finer versus the log of the particle diameter hydrometer analysis is based upon the principle of sedimentation of the soil grains in water when a soil specimen is dispersed in water a dispersing agent sodium hexametaphosphate is used the particles settle at different velocities settling of velocities depends upon the shape size weight and the viscosity of the water standard reference ASTM D928 may be used now this method is based on Stokes law which state that if a sphere is allowed to fall through a liquid which is of indefinite extent 
its velocity or the settling velocity is increased rapidly at first under the acceleration due to gravity however a constant terminal velocity is reached within few seconds and is maintained indefinitely as long as the conditions are not changed so the stokes law does not apply to particles smaller than 0.002 millimeter and maybe that's fine from civil engineering point of view or geotechnical engineering point of view because the percentage of 0.002 millimeter particles would be very very less so it will not be affecting the strength and compressibility and hydraulic and utility characteristics of the soil so therefore we can avoid that or ignore that so the stokes law states that the settling velocity of a spherical particle is dependent upon the density of the solids density of the water diameter or the size of the particle and the viscosity of water now if we rearrange this equation for the diameter where v is equal to distance per unit time and the density of the solid is equal to the specific gravity into rho of water and if we simplify this equation further we will come up with a much simpler equation where we can see d is equal to which is in millimeter into k it's a constant which is dependent upon the specific gravity and the viscosity of the water that l term can be find out from the reading or we can say hydrometer reading and that case depend upon the viscosity and specific gravity now that k constant or the variation of the k with the temperature and the specific gravity is shown in this table for example if you find out the specific gravity of 2.65 and we are finding the specific gravity at a temperature of 25 so the k value would be equal to 0.01286 and if you are finding you find out the specific gravity is 2.55 then we can use the k value of 0.01327 now this procedure is simple in the laboratory we take 50 gram of own dried sample in a sedimentation cylinder dimensions are given for the sedimentation cylinder here it is marked for a volume of 1000 ml sodium hexa metaphosphate it's a dispersing agent it's used to disperse the soil particles you know to keep the soil particles in suspension it's increased to 100 ml by adding distilled water stm 152h type hydrometer is used is placed in the sedimentation cylinder specific gravity in the vicinity of its pulp is determined at a depth of a depth we can call that as a distance l specific gravity is a function of the amount of soil particles present per unit volume of suspension at that particular depth also at a time t we usually note down the particles are settling after some time so we take several readings for example 15 seconds 30 seconds 60 seconds 120 seconds so the larger the particles would have settled beyond the zone of measurements and meters are designed to give the amount of soil in grams that is still in suspension hydrometers are also calibrated for soil that have a specific gravity 
of 2.65 for soils of other specific gravity correction factor is applied which i will share by knowing the amount of soil in suspension so you can see here the soil particles are in suspension that's why it's giving us a muddy look darker and we place the hydrometer and we take the hydrometer reading r The effective depth or distance is the depth measured from the surface of water to the center of gravity of the hydrometer bulb. So here is the L. The effective depth or distance, the value of L will change with time and it is dependent upon the L1 because L1 is dependent upon the amount of particles in suspension here. This is the center of gravity. L2 is the distance or length of the bulb. Vb is the volume of the hydrometer bulb which is 67 cubic centimeter. L2 is the length of the hydrometer bulb which is 14 centimeter. And L1 is the distance along the stem of the hydrometer from the top surface till the center of gravity cross-sectional area is also given 27.8 square centimeter the value of l1 is 10.5 centimeter for a reading of r is equal to 0 and l1 is equal to 2.3 centimeter for a reading of r is equal to 50 hence for any reading you can find out l1 if you know this our reading here we can also find out l or the effective depth or distance using this r or the hydrometer reading now the percent of soil remaining in suspension at the level at which the hydrometer is measuring the density of the suspension or the percent finer we can easily find out using this equation where p is equal to r a divided by w and that weight of soil which is 50 gram took r is the reading and a is the correction factor is for gravity for example for 2.65 specific gravity Correction factor A is equal to 1 and for 2.5 specific gravity factor is 0 0.94 and for 2.45 it is 1.05 if we are using hydrometer of 152H. Once you get the percent finer from sieve analysis and also from the hydrometer analysis then you plot this particle size distribution curve and you also plot particle size distribution curve from hydrometer now you need to be very very careful here that the data is not matching so you try to form the sieve and hydrometer analysis as carefully as much possible because we need to find out the coefficients different coefficients d60 d30 that's okay but d10 as well that's also okay but here we can clearly see that we cannot determine the d60 here so from the hydrometer analysis and from the sieve analysis you plot percent finer on an arithmetic scale and particle diameter on logarithmic scale and you get the complete particle size distribution curve now I will show you a video here which will give you 
and okay. explain the procedure and the calculation as well. So now that you've performed the sieve analysis, we can move on to the hydrometer test, which, as we discussed earlier, is the test more suited for characterizing the uh, particle size of soils like silts and clays. So materials for what you're going to use here, from the finds that passed number your number 200 sieve. sieve in the last test, Two you'll collect 50 grams. That 50 grams is going to be put into a mixing container and then mixed in this apparatus for 60 seconds with 125 milliliters of a dispersing <coughs> agent. You're going to create this slurry in the mixer and then you're going to pour that slurry into a graduated cylinder. Have on hand distilled water which we will mix with the slurry and fill up to the 1000 milliliter mark on your graduated cylinder. As soon as that's full you're going to cover the cylinder with a rubber glove, get a nice, nice tight seal on top so you don't get any spills, and you're going to mix the solution for a minute. As soon as that's minute, that minute is up, take the glove off, take your hydrometer from its cylinder of distilled water, place it in the solution, and then you will take readings at 15, 30, and 60 seconds from the hydrometer. If you zoom in on the camera, you can see there's a scale of where the hydrometer floats. You'll be taking the readings at where that scale is at the bottom of the meniscus, well, in this cylinder, actually. Um, remember that the hydrometers are very delicate instruments, so be very gentle with them. Don't bang them on the sides of the cylinders. Uh, just be gentle because they're expensive and delicate and we only have so many of them. Okay, so those readings that you take at the specified time intervals in your manual will be recorded here and then we will be using the equations on the board to do some calculations. These will be moved out of the way by the time we get there so you'll be able to see that. Okay, so now I'm going to start the experiment. Start the test. 50 grams of fines. Hundred and twenty five milliliters of dispersing agent. to the mixer. After a minute is up, Take the slurry, pour it into your cylinder. And add your thousand milliliters of distilled water. Maybe be more careful than I just was. Don't spill on your lab manual. Remember to check the gloves for holes before you start turning so you don't pour slurry all over the table and ruin the experiment before it starts. 
right, that's one minute. Glove comes off. And the hydrometer immediately goes in. Again, very gently. Stopwatch starts. Fresh one to help me take readings. And I'll be reading at 15 seconds. 41. Thirty six at thirty seconds. Next reading is at sixty seconds. Thirty two. 60 seconds, take it out, put it back in your distilled water, give it a good spin, and then continue taking readings at two minutes and so forth at the intervals determined. Okay, so now that we've performed the hydrometer test, we can do some calculations. Uh, we're going to take you through so you can then find out the percent final using RA divided by WS or W into 100 D is equal to K and root N by T. T is taken in minutes which is the time which in the, the interval which you have taken those readings like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds and you can plot the percent final, percent final and the particle sizes. Now there are different coefficients which are used to find out the type of soil. For example, this the effective size are the D10 coefficient. D10. This parameter is the diameter in the particle size distribution curve corresponding to 10% finer. Now, if you get D10 in millimeter, it means that from this particular size, let's assume that this is 0 0.0225 or 25 millimeter. Now this is the size of the particle. From this particular size, 10% of the soil would be finer. And 90% of the soil would be Coarser. Now the coefficient of uniformity is equal to D60 divided by D10, 60% finer diameter. From this size, 60% of the soil particle, which the soil sample is finer, or it would be smaller sizes. 60% would be smaller sizes of this particular size. Now the higher the value of the coefficient of uniformity, the larger the range of particle sizes in the soil is well graded. And the coefficient of gradation or coefficient of curvature, CC, so square of D30, by d60 into d10 now what is d30 diameter corresponding to 30 percent final which means that from this particular size in millimeter which we will get from the curve 30 percent of the particles in that soil sample is finer and 70 percent particles are Coarser. Now a well graded soil has a coefficient of uniformity, coefficient of curvature between 1 and 3. 
Now the problem 3 states that the for the particle size distribution curve shown in the problem number 2 to determine D10, D30 and D60 coefficient of uniformity coefficient and coefficient of radiation. So if we simply start a horizontal line from the percent finder 10 and we come down here so we can find out the D10 value of 0 0.15 millimeter. Similarly for D30 and D60. So D10 value will be equal to 0 0.15 millimeter, D30 0 0.17 millimeter and D60 0 0.27 millimeter. We already know that D60 divided by D10 is equal to coefficient of uniformity. D60 is here. T10 is 0 0.15. It's equal to 0 0.8. A typo here. CC is equal to the square of D30 divided by D60 into D10. It's equal to 0 0.71. Now there is an ex another example where you can use the concepts of previous problems to plot the particle size distribution gradation curve sieve number opening and mass return is given to determine the effective sizes average sizes uniformity coefficient and the coefficient of curvature you also need to determine the textural composition of the soil based upon the amount of gravel sand etc total mass of the coarse grain material was 500 grams so see number is given mass retained percent mass retained you can find out and you can find out the cumulative mass retained and then you can subtract this column from 100 so for the number 4 mass retained is 0 percent mass retained would be 0 as well and cumulative mass retained Zero, it means that 100% is passing from sieve number 4. For sieve number 10, 14.8 grams were retained. Now 14.8 divided by 500 into 100 will give you 3% retained and the cumulative percent is 0 plus 3 and that is 3. Then for sieve number 20 it's 98 grams so you can simply find out why 98 divided by 500 into 100 will give you 19.6 and the cumulative would be adding these three here and then be equal to 22.6 if you subtract 10 minus 3 that 3 minus oh, sorry if you subtract that 3 from 100 to be 97 percent passing and then 77.4 and similarly you will come up with this column as well effective size is 0 0.16 or 0 0.1 millimeter d60 is equal to 0 0.45 millimeter now 60% is finer than this 0 0.45 millimeter and from 0 0.1 millimeter only 10% is finer material or the soil in this particular soil sample so you can clearly see that 100% is passing from 4.75 it means that 0% Scrabble 98.8% is sand, silt, and clay. They are having 1.2%. And we can simply use those equations d60 divided by d10 to find coefficient of uniformity and coefficient of curvature using square of d30 divided by d10 into d60. 
so that's all please kindly try and plot the percent finer and the equal sizes here from here you can get the particle size from here is percent finer in excel and you can plot the x-axis on the logarithmic scale and the percent finer on the y-axis on the arithmetic scale to better understand and to better understand how you can plot the data thank you very much if you have any questions please kindly ask in the comment i hope you are enjoying my videos please kindly like share and subscribe to my youtube channel assalamu alaikum and allah hafiz take care